What if your AWS infrastructure could automatically respond to real world events like a server being shut down or an alarm going off all without you lifting a finger? In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build exactly that using event bridge and a single Lambda function. This is one of the most underrated patterns in the serverless toolbox. And stay tuned till the end because I'm gonna give you a foolproof method for creating event bridge rules for any AWS service that you want. Hi, if you're new around here, my name is Ryan. I'm an AWS certified solutions architect and developer. And my goal is to teach you modern serverless system design using AWS. Let's jump in. All right, so today we're gonna to be walking through a hands-on demo using the AWS CDK, where EventBridge acts as a central event router. We'll create four triggers, including an EC2 instance state change, a CloudWatch alarm, a code build project state change, and a cron job, all routing to a centralized Lambda function that will just log each event. The goal is to showcase how different EventBridge triggers work in real world scenarios. All right, let's jump into the code. All right, so jumping into the code here, of course, I'll have this repository listed down in the description. All right. So so jumping here into the stack, if we scroll down here, we can see our Lambda function definition. This is of course the Lambda function that's just going to be triggered every single time one of our event bridge rules is met and it will just log the event. Next, we need to add permissions to our Lambda function to allow event bridge to be able to invoke it. All right, here's our EC2 instance for our first event bridge rule. This is gonna be used to test instance state change notifications, like if we stop or we terminate the instance. Of course, we need to put that instance inside of a VPC, so we declare that here, and we of course put it into the free tier, so it's not gonna cost us money. Next, for our second event bridge rule, we're gonna define a CloudWatch alarm that we can put into alarm at will. This will allow us to manually control our alarm and put it into an alarm state by controlling a metric value that's tied to that alarm. So we define our metric here, and we define a period of one minute, and then in our demo alarm, we're going to set our threshold to one, and we're gonna set it to one evaluation period. So when our threshold exceeds one, for for one minute, it's gonna put our alarm into an alarm state. And then of course, trigger our Lambda function and log the event. For our third alarm, we're gonna define a code build project. So if you had a code build project that was building a front end web application and it failed for whatever reason, you could set this up to alert you when that happens. And of course we have an exit one and an exit zero, so you can test both the fail and success states. Now let's talk about the actual rule definitions themselves. Our first rule is of course the EC2 instance state change. The most important things to note inside an event pattern are going to be your detail type and then your detail object. And we'll get into a little bit more about these in a little bit here. But basically the detail type is just a string that is going to equal whatever event you're looking to grab from EventBridge. There are certain events that are automatically sent to EventBridge for every single AWS service. And I'm gonna show you how to find those in a second. Of course, we're looking for a state change notification. And then inside of our detail here, we're gonna to look to match two different states, either stopped or running. So we can either stop or start our instance and it will trigger our Lambda function and log the events. Then of course, we need to take our rule and we need to make it so that when this rule is met, what does it do? It sends the event to our Lambda function. Similarly, for our alarm rule, we're going to look for a CloudWatch alarm state change and either when it's in alarm or it's okay, so we can toggle between both, it will log both events. And we're gonna make sure that it only triggers on the alarm that we've defined. If you had multiple alarms and you wanted to set a single rule that just alerted you no matter which alarm went into an alarm state, you could just remove the alarm name here. Of course, again, we add the target of our Lambda function. For for our third rule, we have our code build rule here. For code build, we're gonna look for a code build state change, whether it succeeds or fails, and it's only for the project that we defined here in our CDK stack. Again, we add our target for our Lambda function, and then finally, just a fourth rule here for a cron job that's just scheduled to run at a set rate of every five minutes. This is a great rule to use if you wanted to remove data from a database or schedule the deletion of some objects in S3 or something like that on a regular cadence so that you're not incurring costs of things just sitting around. All right, so now I'm gonna give you a quick tip for actually defining these detail types and these detail objects for every single event pattern that you could want for any kind of AWS service. But before I do that, if you're finding value in this video, please don't forget to like it. And then please let me know down in the comments if there's any other videos that you wanna see me make on this channel. All right, so there are a couple of weird things if you were paying attention here. You will notice that the detail object for our second rule, the alarm rule, has its values in camel case, while our code build rule has its values in kebab case. This can be very confusing and I definitely got hung up on this. Anytime that you're trying to define an event pattern for 
for a specific event bridge rule. The first thing you should do is go to the event reference page and I'm gonna link it down in the description. You can jump over to that here and you can see that every single AWS service that emits events is listed in this list. So for example, let's jump into code build. The first thing that you're gonna notice at the very top of this screen is a list of the code build events that get sent directly to EventBridge. These are things that require no configuration to send anywhere. All of these events are just automatically forwarded to EventBridge to then be used in EventBridge rules to perform specific tasks within AWS. So you can see here that we have a build state change, which is of course the one that we're using for our example. So if you're ever wanting to develop an event pattern, you can go here first and see which events are even available to be able to develop a pattern off of. So you'll notice here that we have the code build state change as a string inside of this array. Your detail type is always going to be set to an array and it can contain any number of these code build events that you find. The next step that you're going to take is you're going to take this event, you're gonna copy it and you're gonna go over to ChatGPT or any other LLM and you're going to say something like this. Please generate me a sample JSON event object for whatever code build state change or whatever other event you know gets sent to EventBridge. And then ChatGPT will generate you an exact sample object of what the event would look like if it came to a Lambda function. Now, why is this super useful? Well, because if you see here, like I mentioned before, for our CloudWatch alarm rule, we have our detail object that has keys set into camel case, whereas the code build rule has our details object with keys set into kebab case. If we go back, we can see that we get a detail object within our sample generated JSON event object here. All of our keys are in kebab case. Now, when we go back to our event pattern definition, you wanna make sure that every single key within your detail object matches the same casing that you find inside of the event object that ChatGPT generated for you. Some of them are camel case, some of them are kebab case. I've even seen some of them in Pascal case. You wanna make sure that you generate this JSON object before you start building this event pattern because it's gonna save you a lot of time debugging later. If you have ChatGPT try to just generate the event pattern for you, a lot of times it will just assume that every single detail object follows the same casing, which is not the case. And if you fail to match any of these keys to be exactly as they are in the event objects, then your event bridge rule will just fail to match any events and it won't give you any errors or any helpful messages that tell you something is misconfigured. So this will save you a lot of time debugging these event patterns. And again, when you're looking at these code build events, make sure that whatever event you're looking to match is one that is actually sent to event bridge, because if it's not, then you might have to do some additional configuration to get it to actually forward that event to event bridge where you want it to go. Another thing that I'll note here too is every single value inside of our detail object will be either equal to an object or an array. This goes for even if you wanna just match a single value, it will just be a single value inside of an array. Okay, so that about covers the CDK stack. I'll just jump in real quick here and we'll look at our Lambda handler and we of course see that it just gets the event and then just logs the event. All right, so let's go ahead and deploy the stack now. And I'll have all the commands that we're gonna use in this tutorial listed in the readme for the repository that's linked down in the description. All right, so that finished deploying, let's go ahead and test out some of these rules. All right, so we got our Lambda function here. We will go in here go to monitor and view our CloudWatch logs. Okay, and there's our CloudWatch logs where all of our events are gonna be logged at. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll jump over here to our EC2 instance and we will change the instance state to stopped. Okay, so our EC2 instance stopped. We'll jump back over into CloudWatch. We'll go into our log stream here. We'll refresh. And we can see here that our most recent event that we received says that our EC2 instance is in a stopped state. All right, so there's the first rule working. Now let's jump over into our CloudWatch alarms. We'll click into this here and we can see that our demo error count metric is set to one. Now let's go trigger this using the command line. All right, so if we jump here into our readme for the repository, we can get our alarm trigger CLI command. We'll go ahead and paste that down here. Since I'm using profiles, I'm just going to add my Cloudmancer profile flag here at the very end of the command. And if you don't know what profiles are, you can check out this video that I did on them last year. So we set the value to two, but because we set our period to one minute, it's going to take a second just for CloudWatch to register. And if we wait just a couple more seconds, we can see that our CloudWatch alarm is now in an alarm state. So let's go check our CloudWatch logs. On here, we can do our auto retry on our new events. Cool, we can scroll down here. Looks like this event was for our scheduled cron job, so we can see that that's happening every five minutes. And we've got our alarm state change event received right here as well. All right, so there is rule two and rule four working. Let's go trigger our code build project now. Again, we're gonna use the command line to do this, and we've got the command here in our readme. And we will go ahead and start our project, and we can see that our project was successfully started. Jump into our code build projects here, we'll click on 
that, we can see that our most recent execution failed. We can jump over here into CloudWatch and we can see that we've got a new event and it says our code build state change failed. All right, so there's our final rule working. So this kind of architecture is incredibly powerful for building scalable event-driven systems that can respond to real-time business logic without tight coupling between your services. It's perfect for automation, monitoring, audit logging, microservices, and so much more. And the best part is it's natively integrated into AWS and completely serverless. So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a like, and then please let me know down in the comments if there's any other videos that you wanna see me make on this channel. Thank you for watching.